What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the easiest way to create a floor plan from an image in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there are multiple ways that you could do this. In my opinion, generally the best way to do this is to use a Blender add-on. And in this case, specifically, we're gonna use the add-on Home Builder 3. And so Home Builder 3 is a great add-on for quickly creating things like walls and adding doors and other things like that. So you can get it by visiting this link, which I'll link to in the notes down below, and downloading the newest version of Home Builder 3. So you can click on the button for download the latest version, and then you want to install it inside of Blender. And so basically all that means is you just go into edit preferences, you click on the install button, and you go find the add-on file that's a zip file and you install it. And then once you do that, you just wanna make sure that you've enabled Asset Library Home Builder right here. And so uh, once you've done that, this is gonna give you access to the tool set that's built in to Home Builder. And so the very first thing that we wanna do in this situation is we wanna model using a reference image. Um, you could just model things out manually, but we want to go ahead and use an image. And so in this case, I'm going to use the scan of an interior of a house that I've created using the scan app Polycam, which I'll link to a video about in the notes down below if you're interested in that. And so basically what we want to do is we want to drag this image file into Blender. And usually I recommend going to a top-down view before you do this, but then we're just going to drag this in just like this, right? And so what that's gonna do is that's basically going to bring this image in um, so that we can start working with it. Now, when you first work with an image in Blender, you probably know that it's not in here to scale, right? So this doesn't have like a real world dimension right now. Luckily, and I'm gonna tap the in letter key on my keyboard, um, Home Builder actually has a tool that works for this. So what we wanna do is tap the N key and then click on Home Builder. Um, and then we wanna go over into our rooms. And for our rooms specifically, we wanna click on the option for current room. And so when we do that, what that does is that that gives us access to a tool where we can click on points in order to set a distance, which is a lot easier than the way that we've done that in the past. And so what we wanna do is we wanna zoom in and we wanna find a dimension that we can use in order to set the size of this image. And so in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do this five foot nine inches. And so notice how if you click into the option for current room, there's an option in here for set scale with two points. And we're gonna click on the button for set scale with new two points. And in this case, right, this is going to be 5.75 feet. And then we're gonna click on okay. And what we wanna do is we wanna find the end point in here so I'm gonna find the end point of this dimension, which is right here. And then I wanna click once, and I wanna move my mouse up here, and I wanna click again. And note that these are just single clicks. And when you do this, notice that your image file is going to get much bigger. And you can kind of see with my body model here that this image is now larger than it was before. And so the first thing I like to do when we do this is I like to come in here, click on the walls button, and just draw a wall along this dimension just to kind of double check that this length got set correctly. And notice how this length did indeed get set to five foot nine inches. So I'm gonna undo this because I don't need that wall yet. And so now what we can do is we can come in here and we can start tracing out our walls using the draw wall function. And so one thing to note about this, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on draw wall. We're just gonna click here. And we're just gonna start drawing our walls in. And all I'm doing is just following along with the lengths of my walls. Now, one thing to note about this is you do wanna make sure that you're drawing in a clockwise direction. So if you don't draw in a clockwise direction, what's going to happen um, is walls have an inside and an outside direction with Home Builder, right? So if you draw in the wrong direction, what this is going to do is it's going to put all your cabinets and stuff, if you add cabinets, um, it's going to put those in incorrectly. So what I wanna do is just make sure that I'm drawing that right to left direction. And then I'm gonna come over here, whoops. And all I wanna do is I just wanna draw my wall very close to the end of the other wall. And so then all I'm gonna do is just move my mouse in this direction so the end of this wall is close and I'm gonna tap the C key. And so when you tap the C key, what that does is that closes the room 
in. So you can see how we've now got the walls of our floor plan in here just like this. And so one thing that I do want to adjust in here is I do want to take this particular wall and notice how I kind of started it on the wrong point. So what I want to do is I just want to right click on this. I'm going to go into my wall prompts and I'm just going to adjust my X location right here. Then I'm also going to go into my wall prompts and I'm going to adjust my wall length like this so that my walls are still all aligned in here. All right, so we're gonna jump out of that project real quick. There's two things I wanted to note. So first off, when you install Home Builder, um, if you wanna use different units, um, notice how when I tab in here, right, this is all set to Imperial, which I know a lot of people don't use. Um, what you can do is you can actually go up to this tab up here. There's an option for change units. So the Home Builder tab should get added when you install this. But if you click on change units, you can go through and you can change your uh, length, you can change your rotation. Um, all those different things using the change units right here. The other thing I wanted to point out is you can, um, if you want to, and this is probably a more accurate way of doing this if you are trying to get something that's really precise, but when you're adding a wall like this, you can also type in a value. So if I type in 9.5, right, what this is gonna do is this is going to lock my length to nine foot six inches, right? And then if I move my mouse and I click, um, then I can type in a new value, right? So if I typed in 12, it's going to lock this to 12 feet in whatever direction. And the other thing that I didn't talk about on the other floor plan, because all of mine are at right angles, is if you hold the control key, you can also adjust the angle of the wall. So if you don't hold the control key, what it's going to do is it's going to lock you to 90 degrees, which is what you're gonna use most of the time because most walls are like that. But if you do need to draw something that isn't 90 degrees, what you can do is you can hold control and then click, and then you're not locked to that 90 degree direction. So if you need to do that, you can use um, the control key in order to do that. And then once I'm done, um, you can either right click or hit the escape key to exit the wall creation command. And so now we're good to go, right? We've got the exterior of our floor plan all set. And so now we can come in here and we can model our interior walls. And so modeling the interior walls is very similar to the exterior walls, but I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna draw a wall. And notice how if I mouse over a wall, it's going to highlight it. Well, when I do that, what that means is that means that I can click and it's going to extend or continue the wall from that location. Now, if I move over here, I don't think the C key, yeah, the C key isn't going to work. But what I wanna do is I just wanna mouse over this wall, move it and click, and then click again, like this. And so now, what I wanna do is I wanna draw my interior walls. So I'm just gonna jump back into top-down view in order to do this, but notice what I can do is I can come in here and if I mouse over an existing wall like this one, and you can see it better in 3D view, but notice what this does is this comes in here and it kind of like snaps to the wall in here and allows me to draw based on that wall location. So I can just move my mouse over here and then I can right click to close out of that wall. And so we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna draw the rest of our walls. And so if you do want your walls to come in here narrower, right? Because these walls are actually a little bit big. Um, now, I'm not necessarily sure Polycam is measuring my walls accurately, but these seem like they're a little closer to four inches thick. What you can do is you can change your default wall settings to 0.33. Um, so this would be four inches. Then if I draw a wall like this, draw it across here. Notice how that wall size is a lot closer. All right, so now we've got our walls generated in our space. And so we could go ahead and leave this as is, but let's go ahead and let's jump in here and let's also add our doors. And so to add our doors, what we can do is we can jump over into the products section and you wanna look for the option for doors and windows. Okay, and so what I wanna do is I wanna take this door, and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate up just a little bit um, just so that I can see the wall, but I wanna drag it over this wall right here. And so notice when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to snap to your wall. And so once you do that, you can move your mouse and then you can click in order to place it. And so that door is going to have different options in here now. 
So for example, if I was to take the frame, right click on it and go to the entry door prompts, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give us the option to adjust things like the width. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my anchor type so that it stays that center width right here, but notice how, or in that center location, but notice how we can use this in order to adjust the size of this door. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn off the handles. And so in this case, right, this door is probably more of a closet door and um, the tool doesn't have like a bifolding door in here, at least yet, um, but you can adjust things like your door frame, right, which is going to basically come in here and give you a different door frame style. But you can use this in order to really quickly add doors to your model like this. So I can drag a door in here, click in order to place it. Then I can right click and I can use the prompts in order to adjust this to actually fit what's supposed to be going on in here. So in this case, for example, then we'll go back in my door prompts again. This door needs to be a little bit narrower. So we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. So now we've got that door in here. Uh, there's actually another wall across here that I missed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag another door into this wall right here. And again, you can just go into your prompts and you can adjust that so that you've got an accurate door in your partition. So as of right now, Home Builder is probably the most intuitive tool for Blender for creating different walls and other things like that. Highly recommend that you go check it out. It is free to download, but leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.